Uh, Ross, what's it like to be back at uh, Surbiton where the trophy's on? It's brilliant. You know, I've got fantastic memories of playing here. Um, in the past, all British people and people connected to tennis know that the history and the values of this fantastic club and, and event has. And it's a, it's a shame it it went away from the calendar uh, for six or seven years. But now it's brilliant to be back, and I'm really uh, thrilled to be back here. I live about 15 minutes down the road, so it's excellent to come back and, and support the tournament and, and realise that what great support it has from from fans and, and players and, and generally word around tennis throughout the UK. So it's the start of a fantastic British summer of sport, um, world summer of, of sport as well in, in the tennis terms and it's brilliant to be here, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, you played in the tournament as a junior and a senior, so uh, any memories as you walk around the grounds? Yeah, I mean I, I look at the different courts and, and sort of have uh, have different thoughts of wins and losses and good shots and bad shots you know as a, as a player you always remember the the bad ones for the good ones but you remember a lot of the shots that you play out there so I've got fantastic memories here that, that it's very uh, unique the, the setup that they have on, on the courts out there and um, the players love playing here the, the grass courts are pure, pure quality um, very true bounce and it's really really enjoyable to be back here and, and to see the positivity around the club very very homely very um, very traditional, very unique type of place that, that not all clubs around the world have these days. So it's really, really enjoyable to be back here and, and generally speak to the guys that they're really full of uh, full of praise. How important is uh, you know the grass court season and the Aegon Serpentine Trophy for the British players? Well, it's big to be part of the grass court swing. You know, the grass court is so important to be part of the ATP calendar, and, it, and it's extended as Wimbledon have pushed their week back. There's now three weeks in between Roland Garros and Wimbledon, so there's a real strong period of time to get equipped for players to get acquainted with the grass court, and for us as the ATP World Tour to build up the grass court season because it has huge right to be in our calendar. So it's very, very important for this this tournament to be in this this part of the year, and for players to do well here is hugely valuable because as a lead up to the to other big events and in a big event in its own right with the with the player field you have here. So you've got some phenomenal players here and, and some fantastic young players coming through the Challenger Tour, some fantastic players who who formerly have been highly ranked and, and who currently still have a good ranking. So the standard of tennis is very high. I think it's appreciated by the, the fans and the crowds that we have out here who really appreciate good grass court tennis and there's not much like grass court tennis, you know, when you play on the grass and you realise the different um, tactics and uh, Sort of movement element, element to, to playing good grass court tennis. It's something of an art, and it's great to see again year in year out back here in Surbiton now to be able to sort of witness grass court tennis at its finest. Well, sadly, you've hung up your racket now. Uh, what's your role at the ATP? I work on the player side, so I run the players division, so 600 players which we look after, as well as I'm also on the, the management of the, the tour, the overall governance of the tour. So, you know, from player education to rule changes, prize money, marketing, um, from start to finish, anything to do with a player comes under my department and generally with the governance of the tour, you know, we've got 250 tournaments which we look after also, 600 players, so the, the, the ATP World Tours are a very well ordered machine. Um, there's a lot of different aspects, there's a lot of variables and that's why it's so exciting for me to move into tennis, from tennis, into a job like this, you know, being tournament director last year of the Aegon Championships at Queen's was very exciting and generally now hopefully I've got a good idea of what it takes to make good decisions for tennis as a whole. When you retired did you have a list as long of your arm of, of things you wanted to achieve? Yeah I mean good question, um, it, there was a few options yeah and, and there were some good options that came about, some good opportunities but this one to work with Chris Commode who was the former tournament director and managing director of the ATP World Tour Finals and of the Queen's event, he's now the president and CEO of the ATP World Tour and so I work very closely with him on, on all aspects of the tour and he's a phenomenal leader and a guy who has amazing vision and direction of where he wants men's tennis to go to grow to and we're getting there we're, we're, we're installing a very strong culture and we're really trying to push players and tournaments forward to constantly grow global tennis um, so this was very appealing for me to get involved in obviously being tournament director myself of the Eagle Championships last year at Queen's was very exciting but this was a, a real good opportunity and one that I'm, I'm relishing and really enjoying the travel and the interaction with players and tournaments and and generally trying to to push the tour forward in the right direction now it's uh, obviously grass court season we have to talk about Andy Murray um, what are your hopes for Andy at Wimbledon well I think he's one of a number of players that could do very well I think his performances over the past 20 Grand Slams and 10 years on tour have really proved 
how good a player he is. His consistency has been sublime. He's been he's firmly a top three or four player now. I think we could say that over the last six or seven years that he's been right at the top of the men's game. And he's a player that players have huge respect for, yet they fear when they're in the draw. But that he's one of a number of players who are like that. You know, there's many players, and our strength and depth on the ATP World Tour is enormous now. From the top end of players with the top four players that, you, that, that get so much publicity, but also top 10, top 20, top 100 players. You know, there are so many good players out there now who are very similar, and, and that the margins are so small. So if Andy's healthy, and if he's feeling good, and if he's, you know, able to play and compete well, he'll be a tough man to beat, but there's plenty of those ones out in the draw. So history would show that he would be one of the favorites to do well in these tournaments, but the player field's getting stronger, the player standard are getting better, and these tournaments are improving as well. So generally players want to do well and have the urge to, to do well and, and to pick up ATP World Ranking points and prize money in there. Uh, you're now planning on spending the rest of the afternoon watching some matches here at the Absolutely, A-Con Absolutely, yeah. I look forward to going to I've seen some and the tennis is brilliant, as we said, so I go out there and watch some more tennis now. Thanks so much.